Charles Purcell presents. That's me, Charles Purcell. Thanks for listening. I got some good stuff for you today. Let's see. What? How should I tell you about this? We have a couple of. Uh, well, I, I'll, I'll say this: if you've been listening to the show in order, and I don't know how many people do that in podcasts. Some, some do, some don't. If you have been, our last five episodes was kind of a mini series called Scrouse in the House uh, with my myself and my good friend, the Scrouse, host of Image for Hire on River West Radio. Anyway, uh, that mini series is now uh, come to its completion, and now we're back to the regular show. If indeed there is such a thing as a regular show, we'll find out. But uh, back to scenes and stories and monologues and just a variety of things. Uh, today we've got, uh, what have we got? The Secret Life of Sweaters is coming up. Are you a sweater wearer? Uh, where I am, sweater weather is, is ending now and we're moving into tank top weather. And I'm, I prefer sweater weather because of my particular body type. Uh, but that's okay. That's neither here nor there. What else have I got for you today? A little, uh, little radio drama. A little radio drama for you on the subject of journalism. And not to give it away, but uh, we'll have to do a whole long rant on this sometime. Now that uh, people on the opposite side of my political beliefs, kind of the polar opposites, they're criticizing the media, and that's my job. That's uh, See, now they're, they're stealing my thunder, and they're criticizing them in a way that I'm not criticizing them. In other words, they're calling fake news any... The whole kind of fascist dictator technique of anything you don't like, you call fake news. You call the press the enemy of the people so they will only believe you. Uh, that's one way to go. That's one way to criticize the media. Uh, but again, that's a, that's a bad way, and that's a fascist way, and that's not my way. My way, and I've been saying this for years, I'm very concerned about the impact of money on media. And it's not that they don't tell the truth. It's just they tell the truth that serves their bottom line. And uh, they also kind of tailor the news in a way that creates conflict because that gets you more eyeballs and more eyeballs gets you higher ad revenues. And, you know, the whole thing, it all really comes down to money, 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 money. Anyway, we'll, we'll get to that another time. Speaking of money, you know, let's, let's start here. Let's start here. I have someone in the studio with me. Our musical director, Peter Donalds, is here. If you've heard all the other podcasts, uh, Stream of Consciousness Talk Radio Theater, he provided the theme song and the incidental and more than incidental music for that. What else did we do? Anyway, and when, whenever we have a project, he's our guy that we go to for music. And I thought I'd start. Hi, Peter. How are you? Hi. Good to see you. So you've got your guitar with you today. Yep. The reason I wanted to have you on, speaking of money, our theme song, which I've never mentioned, the theme song to this program Charles Purcell presents has a title and it has lyrics which we never hear it just it's just kind of a soft piano version of your song called money gotta go that's right money gotta go money gotta go money gotta go money gotta money gotta go gotta go and that's it well here let's let's play a little bit of uh of our, of our opening theme which the listeners are familiar with yeah that's just a uh, a slowed down piano version of the chorus of Money Gotta Go. And of course, um, well, you go ahead, tell us why I chose the song. Well, we were in complete agreement. We were simpatico, as we often are, on our uh, attitude about money, that money itself, as a concept, just has to go. It's ruining everything it touches. The actual concept of money itself needed to go. And that's what the song was about. I had that phrase, money got to go, in my head for the longest time, years maybe. And then it morphed into that, uh, that little uh, money got to go, money got to go, money got to go, money got to go, got to go. Money got to go, money got to go, money got to go, money got to go, got to go. That was in my head for another couple of years. And finally, I wrote a song around it. And then uh, you liked it and used it for your theme. Okay, so you want to play it for us? Yeah. E minor. It's just uh, the theme. La da da dee da 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 dee dum dum da da dee dee dum. Da 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 dee da 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 dee dee dum da da dee dee. So that's more like your piano version. Just a real simple kind of one three five progression, right? Okay. But that's as you said, it's a slowed down version of. 
This is yeah. how it was written. Now we're going for guitar and voice. Yeah. Let's hear it. Want to hear it? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. The Appalachian Mountain Folk, their music had its charms. They strummed it on the porches and they picked it in the barns. They never made no cover charge. The songs weren't bought and sold. They kept them in their hearts and they sung them young and old. Money gotta go, money gotta go, money gotta, money gotta go, gotta go. Money gotta go, money gotta go, money gotta, money gotta, gotta, gotta go. The ancient Babylonians hit the bull right in the eye. They knew that money shouldn't get to sweat you till you die. They told the halves you had enough and set the debtors free. Then everybody danced and sang, had a kick and jubilee. See, the thing about money is that money isn't really real. They dreamed up the buck and roll the schmuck who made the first stone wheel. It's killing us as sure as rain, but man, we just don't get it. It's deep inside us like a virus and it lives because we let it. Money gotta go, money gotta go, money gotta, money gotta go, gotta go. Money gotta go, money gotta go, money gotta, money gotta, gotta, gotta go. The life of every woman, every child and every man The birds, the bees, the sky, the trees, the rivers and the land Can't be measured with no spreadsheet, don't depreciate with time No bank is gonna take this, mine is yours and yours is mine Money Money gotta go, money gotta go, money gotta, money gotta, gotta go. My house and shoes and heat and food all take a lot of coin. I'm in this damned old rat race that I never asked to join. We'll work and spend and borrow and lend until we make them pay. We'll hang them high and leave them dry for all their thieving ways. See, the thing about money is that money isn't really real. They dreamed up the buck and roll the schmuck who made the first stone wheel. It's killing us as sharp as rain, but man, we just don't get it. It's deep inside us like a virus, and it lives because we let it. Money gotta go, money gotta go, money gotta, money gotta go, gotta go. Money gotta go, money gotta go, money gotta, money gotta, gotta go. Said money gotta go, money gotta go, money gotta, money gotta go, gotta go. Money gotta, money gotta go, gotta go. Money gotta, money gotta, gotta, gotta go. Money gotta go, money gotta go, money gotta, money gotta go, gotta go. Money gotta go, money gotta go, money gotta, money gotta, gotta go. There it is, money gotta go, by our own musical director Peter Donalds. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, got another sh- uh, another song for us at uh, before the end of the show called what's it called? It's called Spec about how we're just a speck in the universe, kind of a whimsical, cosmical song. (laughs) Cosmical. (laughs) All right, whatever. (laughs) All right, people, shut up. Shut up and sit down. Come on. Objective news team, let's go. Objective news team, let's get started. Plenty of donuts for everybody. Come on now, you can finish those after the meeting. Is everybody here? Go and save me a crawler, would you? Is everybody here? Everybody except Kurt, the weather guy. He pulled over on his way in to tape a segment on the side of the road when it started raining really heavy. Oh, yeah, northern edge of that uh, hurricane, right? Yeah, that's cool. All right, hey, close the window back there. The donuts are going to get wet. Okay, let's go. Objective news team, morning call. We are objective. There it is. All right, first story. President fires another member of the cabinet. Who's taking the lead on that? I've got that. The the president says it's because they, quote, weren't on the same page policy-wise. I've got reaction from the minority leader who blames the secretary's racist Twitter rant. The secretary, or rather the former secretary, isn't taking calls, so we got some hallway attacks on random members of Congress. From both sides equally? Oh, of course. Yeah, yeah. We, we did the count on that. Objective. 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 All 
All right, sounds good. Lydia, have you booked the panel for the follow-up? Yep, I've got a liberal, a conservative, a nutcase liberal, and still looking for a nutcase conservative. That won't be hard to find. (laughs) Hey, hey, objective. Objective! Item two. The release of a 10-year study from the World Health Organization on how climate change is having measurable and sizable negative impacts on the health of the poor around the globe. Jesus. Bob, this one's yours? Yeah, very complicated. I'll need at least 60 seconds for the hard piece. 60 seconds? Jesus. Okay, I guess. You got it. All right. Listen. Lots of potential problems here. Yeah, for sure. I've got the lead author from WHO. You got a good climate denier? Uh, Not yet. Still working on our regulars. But I do have a guy from Heritage on how the poor are lazy and fat and don't take care of themselves. And they should move if they don't like the weather. You know the routine. And what's this measurable stuff? By whose measure? And sizable. What does that mean? Sizable. And then you got negative impact. Negative? Look, None of these terms are very objective. Objective! I don't know how much I can muddy the waters in only 60 seconds. I need some of that time for the poor people interview clips. You got poor people on camera? Well, yeah. Talking? Yeah. Our viewers aren't interested in hearing from poor people unless they're being swept away by a tsunami or something. No, just talking about their lives. I can get a flat earther. They're really hot right now, and it counters the whole around the globe narrative. Objective! Yeah, flat earther. Good thinking. Not in the piece, though. Cut that to 30. Put the flat earther in the panel along uh, with a business guy. You know, effect on trade. Oh, and a couple of strategists from each side on the political fall. Out. Yeah, midterms are coming up. <laughs> Always, right? <laughs> <laughs> and somebody to defend the study. Yeah, I suppose, right? You got to do that. Objective. Objective. But Lydia, for Christ's sake, keep a tight leash on them. Don't let them go on too long. Those guys are so boring. Don't worry, I'll be in Chad's ear and I'll push him on that. Is Chad moderating this one? Yeah. Chad, buddy, don't let the health guy drone on with all of his so-called facts. Like you did yesterday with that... Lydia, what was that yesterday? Yeah, you mean the education expert on optimum learning environments for kids? Yeah, yeah, that's it. Snooze, Chad. You had a private school voucher firebrand right next to you, and a foul-mouthed high school kid champing at the bit to rip on the f***ing NRA Barbie doll Lydia booked for you. She gave you gold, buddy, and you blew it. You really did, Chad. I was just trying to give everybody time. I appreciate that, Chad, but seriously, keep it moving, okay? All right, what's next here? Oh, hey, Kurt. You got some good tape on the rain? Yeah, it's really coming down out there. What's the angle on the piece? Well, I want to be objective. Objective! Right, right. Play up how the rain really sucks, you know, and causes car crashes and floods and all that, but, but also how the farmers need the rain and how kids like to play in the puddles and... We can keep the flat earth guy to talk about how the rain just falls off the edge anyway, so no problem. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Nice. But what about the no rain viewpoint? We got to stay objective. Objective! Yeah, I don't want to just tell people it's raining. I'm no expert. Let the viewers decide if it's raining or not. Now you're getting it. How about I splice in some tape from last week? You know, when it was really sunny. There you go. How about I book a cancer expert on the dangers of acid rain? Is that still a thing? All right, good. Okay, sounds good. And that holistic healer from last week, she can accuse the cancer guy of being a stooge for Big Pharma and promote, I don't know, Reiki or some shit. Hey, you know what? She should be all wet, you know, and have her talk about running around in the rain for the healing qualities of rain-soaked natural fibers against the skin, you know? Get all sides of this. Brilliant. Objective. Objective. Another cancer guy on the dangers of sunlight and another guru type on the benefits of sunlight. I should be able to stir up a pretty good fight. All All sides! Objective! Objective! All hail God of objectivity! All hail God of objectivity! You are all powerful and perfect in your objective objectivity. You are all powerful and perfect in your objective objectivity. We are but your imperfect servants, striving always to serve in your service. We are but your imperfect servants, striving always to serve in your service. Striving always to be objective. Striving always to be objective. 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 Objective.
Okay, grab the rest of the donuts and get to work. Did you snag a crawler for me? Yeah, here you go. Thanks. Objective! All right, guys how you doing hey chucky bucky here good to be with you as always uh charles asked me to come in here and just fill a couple of minutes i don't know what he wanted me to talk about uh you know except maybe that i was complaining about my thumb drive earlier it doesn't really look like a thumb i guess they call it a thumb because it's about the size of a thumb right i never thought about that before i'm holding it in my hand right now and it's just like about the size of my thumb so maybe that's it a lot of times you don't think about words like where they come from you know like a laptop you just think, oh, it's a laptop computer, but oh, it's uh, it's it can fit right on your lap there. Where I don't know where the top comes from. Laptop, laptop. Let's think about that for a second. Uh, geez, I don't know. Laptop. It's got on the top of your lap, top lap. Then I don't know. But I often think of that, especially when words are combined. You know, you don't think of it like slip cover. Uh, you know, it's a cover, right? That you slip over your furniture, right? It's slip cover. You don't really think about that so much. You just think of one word, slipcover, and then one day it dawns on you, hey, you know, that's like a combination word. I bet there are lots of combination words that you could think of that you never really thought about that before, right? I don't know. Think of one, a shelf, uh, let's see, bookshelf. It's a shelf where you put your books. And I know that sounds like crazy obvious, right? But this, a lot of times you'll come up with a word where you only thought of it as just the one word and you never broke it apart in your mind consciously, right? Because the brain doesn't work always that, that way. Anyway, that was just a thought. It's Chucky Bucky here. The Secret Lives of Sweaters. Consider Ed Jardetsky, professor of sociology at the University of Wisconsin in Madison. Ask anyone on campus about the affable yet sometimes caustic Professor Ed, as his students call him. We found said students at a favorite tossed pasta bar on campus. Professor Ed is the best. Everybody loves him. He's got this ritual where he comes into the room and during his opening lecture, take off his sweater and very carefully folds it and places it on a cabinet next to some papers and lab equipment. Kind of a reverse Mr. Rogers. Few people are more associated with sweater wearing than the universally beloved Fred Rogers on the long-running PBS children's series, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. It's a beautiful day in this neighborhood. A beautiful but if you're familiar with the program, especially its iconic opening and closing, you'll discern a difference between Mr. Rogers and Professor Red. Look at him. He's hanging up his sweater in the closet on a hanger. Professor Ed. This is just so wrong. On a subject that brings out more his caustic side than his affable side. Everybody knows you don't put sweaters on a hanger. And here he is, this ubiquitous television superstar, setting this absolutely heinous example for millions of impressionable young children who love him and hang on his every word. No pun intended. Pun very much intended. When I'm able to calm Professor Ed down, I ask him to explain his own reverse Rogers ritual. Well, of course, the optimal time to wear a sweater is in the early part of the day when temperatures are on average cooler by anywhere from 5 to 13 degrees Celsius than temperatures in the mid to late afternoon. That, of course, is the beauty of the sweater and its primary functional design. That is, it is designed, intended by its very nature, to be taken on and off as conditions uh, prescribe. Not so the case for another famous sweater wearer. You never see him put the sweater on or take it off. It's just always there. Television critic and host of the podcast, What's On? Saul Kukinis. And you never see the same sweater twice. It's not realistic. I mean, right? Seriously. Of course, Bill Cosby's character, Dr. Huxtable, uh, did his famous sweaters symbolize something? Sure, I guess. Maybe. I don't know. Probably not. That guy was just fucked up. From the dude and his heavy rib-knit cardigan, to Ferris Bueller and his defiant sweater vest, to Scooby-Doo's Velma and her oversized turtleneck, Hollywood has provided its share of famous sweater wearers, but it was the world of politics, not the movies, that provided us with Sweatergate. Good evening. Tomorrow will be two weeks since I became president. 
I've spent a lot of time deciding how I can be a good president. This talk, which the broadcast... Now so, of course, uh, it was the beginning of the end of the Carter presidency, the whole sweater thing. Elaine Strugnell is the John Stuart Mill Chair of Sociopolitical Semiotics at Iowa State University. So, here's this very reasonable, honest, forthright, lovely man imploring Americans to save energy. U.S. President Jimmy Carter infamously wore a Mr. Rogers-style tan cardigan in a 1977 FDR-styled fireside chat. The pundits all agreed on the symbolic intent of the sweater as a totem of energy conservation. So, as it turns out, the sweater was only inadvertently symbolic. That is to say, President Carter just happened to be wearing the sweater at dinner and left it on for his primetime address to the nation. And he was mocked by his critics for the sweater. So, yes, he was pilloried by any number of critics and commentators. And this was only two weeks into his presidency. So, that's right, not a good start. This 1977 fireside chat is not to be confused with President Carter's so-called malaise speech. So, right, that was two and a half years later, and if the Cardigan chat was the beginning of the end, then the crisis of confidence speech, he never used the word malaise, by the way, that was the label, of course, given by his political enemies, of whom there were many by the summer of 1979. Uh, If the Cardigan incident was uh, the beginning of the end, then the crisis of confidence speech was Really, the end. Did he wear the cardigan for the 1979 speech? So, no, not at all. That that address was given in the uh, standard suit and tie, seated at his desk in the Oval Office. It's a shame, really. He was simply asking us Americans to be our better selves, to, to be humble, to be prudent, to be kind, to be gentle to the earth, cognizant of how our actions impact future generations. Of course, it was politically ruinous, Uh, No politician has championed that message since. Indeed, quite the opposite. Very, very sad when you consider the choices we've made as a people. It is time for us to join hands in America. Let us commit ourselves together to a rebirth of the American spirit, working together with our common faith We cannot fail. Jane Mansfield was also famous for her sweaters. Are we still talking about sweaters? Yes. Okay. Hollywood historian Bobby Holleran. Well, of course, Jane Mansfield, along with actresses like Lana Turner and Jane Russell, were known as Sweater Girls. The moniker mostly stuck with Mansfield, though, because, well, Turner and Russell had some real talent as actresses and had some actual success in films where Mansfield was best known primarily for, well, her sweaters. More on sweaters next time when we, uh, well... Okay, I guess that's really about it. Uh, No need to go on about sweaters. Uh, There really won't be a next time. Until then, button up or pull over, but stay warm, I guess, unless it's summer, then I really don't know. Was uh, Was any of this necessary? Thank you, and good night. You're listening to Charles Bursell Presents, and there are the secret life or the secret lives of sweaters. Is it the secret life of sweaters or the secret? I guess that really doesn't matter, does it? Uh, what really matters is what how it made us feel. Because what we feel obviously means more than what we know, right? These days, feelings and emotions, uh, feelings and emotions take precedent over Ideas, facts, arguments, logical thinking. Can't have that anymore. It's passe. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna have to talk at length about this sometime. There has to be a place. There has to be a place. I'm not discounting emotion and feelings. They're wonderful. But there has to be a place where people can come together and actually share the same facts 
and argue using the same basic logic to make decisions that impact all of us together. Don't you think? I'm just a speck in my town That's a speck on the planet That's a speck in the universe That all of us inhabit That's a speck on the cosmos Out to where we'll never see That's a speck in the atom Of a little bitty flea It lays around all day On a dog named Bay runs around the yard her life ain't very hard she's just a dog on a farm in a corner of the world that's a spot in the void out where time begins to curl that's a dot out in space where she can never know that's a speck on a blade of the grass you're about to mow it's cool between your toes Decide to let it grow Lay down beneath a cloud You start to think out loud It's just a cloud in the sky Kinda looks like Grover Cleveland It's a speck of a thought in your head that just won't leave and now it feels like you've been here before like you can touch it but it's gone for you know still you try but it's too much it floats away in time just like a long lost rhyme but as you let it go Way down deep you know That you're a speck in your town That's a speck on the planet That's a speck in the universe That all of us inhabit That's a speck on the cosmos Out to where we'll never see That's a speck in an atom Of a hair on me That's Peter Donalds, our own musical director, with his song, Spec. You can find uh, find more at peterdonaldsmusic.com. And find this show and all shows at uh, Apple Podcasts, the Podcast Source app, or pretty much anywhere you find podcasts, and you can subscribe. You can also find all the shows this one and Stream of Consciousness Talk Radio Theater and all of them all the way back in time at charlesbursell.com. Real easy. All right. Talk to you later. <laughs>